There we go. Oh. Hey, everybody. It's Halloween. Yay. <laughs> so I got the witch's hat on. It's fancy schmancy. And I forgot tea because, sorry, I don't know why I forgot it. I just did. I was thinking candy. Um, and anyways, we are, uh, it's me, Dr. Smith from Accomplished Health and Wellness and Heather Fiore from Free State Nutrition. And today we're talking about gluten, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Gluten loveliness yes. or not so loveliness, I guess. Mm -hmm. if yeah. You're, yeah, depending on who you are. Mm -hmm. So, um, I thought we would start about talking about like celiac disease and gluten sensitivity and then move on to like, where do you find gluten? What is that stuff? Right. And how do you avoid it? And what are you supposed to do? So, um, you know, celiac disease is, so it's interesting because we've, in the last couple of years, have always called like gluten sensitivity, gluten sensitivity or insensitivity or gluten intolerance or whatever. Mm -hmm. yes. But that's not celiac disease. Right. We need to be specific on that. Excuse me. But um, gluten, like they have a new name now for gluten sensitivity. And it's like non-celiac. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Gluten wheat sensitivity. Oh, okay. Yeah, gluten wheat sensitivity. So there you go. But it, and it has like an acronym. It's like NG. C S C G N G C S I think, but the W is left off. Okay. Or you can add the W. Anyways, now you know, people. It's changing because they don't really know what no. it is. And they recognize that that gluten intolerance, I'll just call it gluten intolerance. Mm -hmm. They recognize that that is an issue, that there's lots of people that have this. There might even be more people that have that versus people that have celiac disease. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Um, and what they, so there was a study back actually just a couple years ago, 2016, I think. Um, and so they originally thought that gluten intolerance didn't do any damage to the villi of your small intestine like celiac disease does. Right. But what they actually found was that it does. It's just not to the same extent. Hmm. Yeah, it's a milder form. And so they had this um, this study done, and um, what they found was that they that wheat exposure was causing a systemic immune reaction in these people that were not celiac diagnosed people. Do they have a wheat allergy? Well, that's, that's another thing, right? That right, would be like a third, I guess. Well. Well, what they found was that, and uh, so they had this immune response, and then there was some damage done to the villi, but it was small amount, so it was like microscopic. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be microscopic anyway because it's my it's villi, but mm -hmm. it was to a smaller extent versus celiac, which does some damage. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what they so the big question is, what was the cause? Mm -hmm. Because they aren't convinced it was it was gluten. Okay. So we don't so know. know. So there needs to be more data, studies done on it. Yeah. But apparently with the non-gluten one, you can actually get like the same symptoms as gluten intolerance. You just don't have the damage to your, and you don't get the anemia. Right. right. Well, without the damage to the right. intestine. You're not going to get the anemia. Um, but celiac dis disease is autoimmune, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's... Um, what happens is when you eat gluten, when you consume your gluten, you get an autoimmune response. Autoimmune means that you get an inflammatory immune response to the gluten and it actually fights your body. That's what autoimmune means, that you're fighting your own system. Yeah. And it causes damage to your villi of your small intestine and that causes less nutrient absorption. So. Right. There is a genetic component to this, and it also oftentimes puts you at risk of other autoimmune diseases, like we talked about Hashimoto's, this with Hashimoto's mm -hmm. before, right? Yep. Um, some of the symptoms are abdominal bloating, pain, diarrhea. Um, some people get constipation, but I usually hear more diarrhea. Vomiting, paleness, which goes along with your anemia. Mm -hmm. 
foul smelling stools, pale stools, um, because the of the nutrient lack of nutrient absorption, um, fatigue, weight loss, irritability. In kids, you can get failure to thrive, um, and when you get older, you can get some skin reactions. I've actually seen that um, some skin reactions. I actually had a friend who um, her little sister when we were in like high school when her little sister was I don't know elementary or middle school mm -hmm. she actually um came up with celiac and she had hives that's how it presented was wow. hives. That's yeah weird. she got hives actually yeah. so they did all the testing um so there is testing for it um and the testing is trans uh the tissue transglutaminase antibody but sometimes you can have it and sometimes you can't the real diagnostic test is actually a biopsy, right, of the small intestine. But you shouldn't quit gluten before you have the test. Right, because you're, one, your antibodies go down in three to six months. So mm -hmm. stopping the gluten and then having the blood test, it's not, it's going to be like backwards. Yeah. You're not going to, it'll most likely be a false negative. Um, and then treatment is just a gluten-free diet. There's not a medicine. Sorry, guys. It's just diet changes. Gluten-free. Um, you can have other non-classical symptoms, which are like people can present with just iron deficiency anemia. Um, right. They may not have GI symptoms. Right. At all. At all. Um, chronic crazy. fatigue, migraines. Um, you can get a B12 and folate deficiency, so you can mm -hmm. get some peripheral neuropathy or numbness and tingling in your hands and feet. Um, elevated liver enzymes, mm -hmm. which I've never actually thought about with that, but um, looking for that, I usually look for some other things, but add that to my list. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there we go. So where do we find this gluten stuff? So the gluten is the protein in wheat, and but is also it in it's in rye and barley? Um, barley but barley is yeah barley rye and then wheat there are a few you know sort of, that's sort of an umbrella term for things like um spelt um farro what's deep spelt that doesn't sound good Kamet, <laughs> Kamet, um uh -huh. bulgur and then it's like semolina oh yeah semolina. Right, which is Somewhere. how we make pasta so um, so it's the protein part of the protein. It's the protein. Well, and that sucks. Yeah, it's the protein. True. It's, it's oh, and then I mean I should point out it's kind of a duh, but seitan is also gluten because it's like the it. That's that's how you make it. <laughs> seitan. Yeah, seitan is you get is you buy wheat gluten and it's a it's a um, you know a meat um, alternative. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like so tofu and tempeh and those guys, but it's, you know, wheat-based because it's oh. gluten-based. So you don't want to eat that. So you don't want to eat that. When you're gluten. Yeah. And the thing that's important just oh. in terms of, uh, like, the properties of gluten is that it kind of holds things together. So, like, if you're making bread or something, right. you know, it kind of gets, you know, you it's hard to pull apart because right. of the gluten, like, holding it together. It's glue. So this is why gluten-free bread is really hard to make. Yeah. So you need a substitute for that. You need something that's gonna hold it yeah. together, otherwise it just crumbles and mm. it's sad. It is sad. It's what not impossible. Use? What? What do you use? What do you use? Well, there are some brands that some people like. Um, do you use like tapioca? One thing that kind of works, um, or helps anyway, is um, chia seeds. Oh yeah, we've talked about yeah, we've talked about chia seeds because that they makes it crunchy though. Well, no, because they soften. You know, they do. You put them. You make a um, yeah. You put them in water and you make a gel. Oh, okay. And then you know you you're able to um, you know it holds the moisture, so What's then that? it's, it's less dry. Yeah, yeah it's got a little protein. Fiber, lots of fiber. Sure. Yeah. So that'll help you know when you're when you're baking gluten free baking. But it tastes different too. Oh yeah. Does the yeah. gluten really have such a taste that it tastes so much different, or is it the other stuff? I just you? think it's that you're using these like other you know ingredients. yeah like kind of non-traditional flours to try to make 
things that traditional are, things. normally tastes like wheat. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's important that, you know, that you really make sure you have um, a problem with gluten before you avoid it, right? Like if you have right. celiac, we've already established like- We keep always like lifting this up a little bit later, but I did it again. Um, you know, 100% you have to avoid gluten with celiac, with celiac right? Yes. Like, I mean, not even a little bit. Like, you, you know, when the food is making you severely ill, you should avoid it anyway. But, right. But if you don't have symptoms, it's harder. Yeah. If you're non classical symptoms, yeah. Yeah. That's true. But, you know, you, you get tested regularly, right? You, you get your. Um, Why do you have to get. What? What do you mean? You, you get. You your, mean like your blood levels? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I was like, once you have it. Oh, yeah. No, to make sure that you're not, you know, yeah. somewhere getting some exposure to gluten and it's, you know, causing damage or continuing to cause damage to your yeah. intestine, right? So yeah. that's really important for long-term health that your yes. intestine is intact and you're absorbing yes. nutrients yes. as you're supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and there are lots of places where um, where you might get gluten. So we're gonna talk about that, but um, oh. food-wise. Oh dear, somebody's coming in. <laughs> we have, let's see who it is. It's Casey. Everyone say hi to Casey. Hello. Casey, say hi to everyone. That's Casey from Next Gen Hearing. Um, I didn't know he was going to be here today, but surprise. what a surprise. Okay. So, so anyways, um, where else do we Right. Talk about? So it, there's lots of places where food, um, where you find gluten in food. So we're going to go through that. But they are non-food places, and some people are sensitive and some people aren't. Like oh. like skincare products might oh, sure. contain gluten or like toothpaste. Yeah. Toothpaste? Mm -hmm. Does no. it say that on the ingredients? I don't know. I guess so. So, you know, there are resources for people with celiac. You I know. always thought it was funny that corn chips say gluten free. I'm like, I know, of course they are. But, that's a gimmick. I mean, so do gummy bears. Yeah, that's a gimmick. Right, it's a gimmick. Anyways. And that's kind of an interesting point, though, because when you go to a restaurant, and you say like you know i is this gluten free because there are so many people now that are trying to avoid gluten for like all sorts of reasons mm -hmm. they may or may not take you seriously they might be like oh yeah let me check oh yep gluten free no problem but if you have celiac like you really need to know yeah. so it's kind of like a tough place like there are a lot more options for people with celiac because of this whole like gluten free yeah thing that's going on rage but it's Still also rage. a downside because things are you know reportedly gluten-free all the time and like you can't just go to a restaurant that makes pizza and like you know they get out the gluten-free flour and in the and same it's place like the same flour right? like you've got a whole you gotta have a whole, a whole separate area like peanut allergy yeah i mean you can think of it as a severity as peanut allergy you know right it really yeah you really can't have a whiff of it you yeah. need a whole separate area you might get different toaster in your house if you've got people eating gluten and yeah. you're, you have celiac so um you know those are just the things for people with celiac that you really need to be mindful of and why you need you know, professional help to get to figure all this yeah, stuff out. There's, you know? Yeah, there's lots of resources online, but you Tons. know, there's also professionals. Yeah, like Heather. Yeah, except for you said this wasn't your niche. This isn't my niche, but I have done celiac oh, stuff well, because I used to work with people with diabetes. And guess what? Type one autoimmune. autoimmune. That means that a lot of them have yeah. celiac also. Huh, so, yeah, I'm glad I don't have that. Yeah, unless I'm non-classical symptoms. Nah. So that is kind I don't of have interesting. Any deficiency anemia, so I'm good. There are lots of people who might think that okay, I don't have celiac, but I'm somehow sensitive to gluten, right? Like gluten causes this, or when I cut gluten out, I, I feel, feel better. better. But gluten, I mean, in and of itself, is pro-inflammatory anyway in your system. So some people can like if you're eating a ton of wheat and stuff, you can get gassy and bloating. Yeah, right. You may not be like insensitive or sensitive like to it. It's how just your body reacts. Yeah, maybe it's just. I mean, it's just the much. nature of the beast. Yeah. Right. So you know, it's important to kind of tease all this out as best you can. Right. When you so cut out do that. Well, when you cut out gluten, it's really messy because there's it's tied to a lot of different things. It's so many things have gluten. So how can you be sure that it's the gluten and not something else? Right. They all have preservatives too. 
Right, could be, could be sensitive that. to the preservatives. Or maybe you were just eating a lot of processed food yeah. and there's a and lot of And your body doesn't there. like that. Your body doesn't like yeah, the processed so. part. Um, the, another thing is people with um, irritable bowel syndrome oh, God. can have, um, they might get some relief from gluten-free, but it's not necessarily the gluten. It could be um, a FODMAP issue, which is like a whole other ball of wax that we're not going to get into today. FODMAPs are... Bye, Casey. Let's see if I can figure out what it stands for. I'm not going to remember. Fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides. Monosaccharides. Oh, that's what's the M. <laughs> see, I told you I'd forget. Um, but I don't know. Where is it? Maybe it's tell me what it stands for. But anyway, it's it's very specific. There are there's mm -hmm. lists of like low FODMAP foods and high okay. FODMAP foods, and there are there's good evidence that not everyone with IBS, but a lot of people with IBS get relief from symptoms following a low FODMAP mm -hmm. diet. But it um, yeah, see this is the list of like oh, low and high FODMAP, FODMAP foods, FODMAP. and I know. I should have pulled that one up too. So, um, let's see if I can find it for you. Um, what does that stand for? Then? There. Di it's fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and poly polyols. Yes. I mean, it sounds like some kind of sugar. Right, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is not something to do on your own with the internet. Okay, you need that sounds like a it's very involved. Crazy. The low FODMAP, like the base diet, is very low. It's very restrictive. Okay, you're going to be hungry and it's not nutritionally sound. That doesn't sound like fun. It's and not this fun. Is for people with irritable bowel. This is for people who have these terrible symptoms, they can't figure out what's going on, oh. they're desperate for relief. Okay, the they're highly motivated, and this is something that highly help. motivated. Yeah, that means it's hard. Yes, it is. I mean, you're you're really you're you're hungry on this. You know, the first you're starving part of the diet because you it's hate it. So restrictive, and probably some of your favorite things. And then you are slowly fat. add them in. Right, and then you systematically add stuff like once and so you've, you get the bloating. You've again. got no symptom. You have to have no symptoms for you know a few weeks, and then you very systematically add in like you know the. I'm not excited about this. No, it's I. I did help somebody through it once, and you know she was again. She was desperate. She was having sure. like you know running it to the bathroom when multiple times a day. It sucks when your stomach is upset. Yeah, and yeah. if you have to like know where all the bathrooms are, and that's terrible. It's a terrible way to live. So, you know, for certain situations that might help. But I'm bringing it up because gluten is in there. It's one of the FODMAPs. Okay. Yeah, so you're taking everything away. Yeah, so you're taking away gluten, but like all sorts of other stuff too. And so if you take away gluten, you might get some relief in your symptoms if you have IBS, but it's not the whole story, right? You know, and so you might need these other things, or to cut out these okay. other things. And you might, but what's gonna be hard here? It's not right. It's not forever. It's just that you need to establish like what's your tolerance level of all of these potentially, you know triggering foods gotcha all right that's what that's about in a yeah. nutshell okay um so then there's this other interesting thing about sprouted grains which really is just what it sounds like like the seed they let the the seeds you know sprout a little interesting and then they stop the process and then they turn it into whatever they're gonna you know make with well like whatever like bread or you know why would they do that well, something because about they the catch the harvester. <laughs> maybe that's how they discovered it, but um, <clears throat> it's done on purpose to um, aid in digestion. Like that, because it's sprouted, like some of the vitamins are more available. Like it's just like sort of got you but started. But then it causes an upset stomach. No, so that's good. No, these oh. might, might be better tolerated. Oh. Sprouted grains may be better tolerated. Okay, for people that struggle with. I think that sounds like it's going to cost more. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> because right, it's a whole process of like yeah. getting the things, like getting the conditions just right yeah. to sprout and then stop, stop. and then, you know, and take, and it. take it away and continue and the rest of it. it. 
Okay. <laughs> this is like the new, it'll be the new fad. Yeah. I Organic, mean, sprouted, people, I mean, grain food. People in the know are already on top of it. They're oh. already about their sprouted grains. I mean, gotcha. I'm not saying I'm one of those people. I'm just saying that, you know, yeah. there are some people who have already discovered, oh, they're only eating You know, sometimes this stuff gets exhausting because, I know. you know, like there's so much, like eventually we're not going to eat anything. I know. We I know. just got to avoid it all. Right. I mean, if you are on the internet for enough time, that's what you will discover. Yeah. Like you are not safe eating anything. Did you, um, you know how we did our alcohol one mm -hmm. last week? That was last week. That was a couple yeah. weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. someone found it on the YouTube page and they like went on this rant about how um, something, something about the, um, something about the radioactivity of the vineyards in California. And <laughs> Whoa. All I could do was laugh. Yeah. And I was like, now I need my Geiger counter for my wine. Thanks. <laughs> I needed it for my fish. Now I need it for my wine. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Anyway, so, so what foods are safe? Are there okay, foods that so, are safe? So the corn chips. Yeah. They're not good for you, but if you're going to eat some salsa, they're probably safe to eat. Definitely. Okay. So, right. So being gluten-free is not for everyone. Okay. It's very limiting. Um, it's hard to get all the nutrition you need if you avoid grains altogether. And a lot right. of times people think like, it's just easier to, I'll just avoid grains. Like, oh, carbs are bad mm. anyway, so let me just skip all the grains. But you need, you have lots of minerals there, in the grains. Yes, yeah. and then there are and lots of options, so we're gonna get into that. Yeah. But, so my first point is that um, you should try for whole foods first. Always, okay? right, we always say that. Right, because, you know, there. Because, Maybe that's where the sprouted grain comes in, it's a whole foods. Exactly. There are. I should have had like a wheat thing, and I should have been oh, I on it. <laughs> there's um, because yeah. of this craze of gluten free. There's a lot of products, right? Fun. There's like a whole gluten free section of the store sometimes, there is. right? There's like gluten free pizza crust. And guess what? It's all like processed stuff. So mm -hmm. you need to go easy. I'm not saying like you can't ever go down that aisle, right? If you're trying to be gluten free, like you get convenient food as much as anyone yeah. else. But that should not be the basis of your diet. Like the base of your diet can be fruits, vegetables, potatoes. Sometimes potatoes make my stomach upset. Hmm. Yes. It's, oh. it's like three yeah. days of potatoes and I got bloating. Yeah. yeah. See, maybe it's just a matter of moderation. Yeah. Well, <laughs> then I'm like, why did I eat the three days yes. worth of potatoes? Exactly. But yeah, so then it's like once or twice a week. That's all I can do. Right. And then I start getting bloated. Potatoes. But Which that, I love potatoes. But that could be a lot of things. Like that, that could be why potatoes. people think, you know, gluten is no good for yeah. you. It's like, well, if you eat it all day long, every day, then yeah, you know, you're not unlikely to have That's why you're supposed to change it up. Yes. And not eat leftovers. Um, so legumes. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Nuts and seeds. Oh yes, we love our nuts, and right? Seeds. Dairy, like dairy no, does no, not have gluten. No gluten. Just slap that gluten-free right. sign on the milk <laughs> jug. The sticker coming any day now. Ninety-eight um, percent fat-free and gluten-free. There you go. <laughs> There's our two percent milk. Any meats of any kind, seafood. No gluten, unless no. they're chicken nuggets <laughs> or right. something breaded. Yes. Right. You got Then it could have gluten. Common sense. Here. I'm yeah. Sorry. Yes, we're talking about whole foods. Whole and foods. Chicken oh, yeah. nuggets yeah. don't really qualify. Well, if you make them at home and you cut up the chicken okay. into cubes. Right. But then you bread it and then it's I not mean, gluten free. I mean, if you're not aware of what you're doing there, adding yeah. breadcrumbs, then, <laughs> then I don't know. Like, you, you could do cornmeal. You could. I mean, there are ways. Yeah. There's ways to bread it with, you know. Almond flour. Salsa. Sure. Then it'll get a nutty flavor. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Um, soy food, so like you know, oh, tofu yeah. or soy yeah. milk and you know, that stuff. So here are your grains that are gluten free. Okay. Oh, we do rice, have some. of course. Rice. rice. But you gotta watch rice well, because they bleach it. You okay. know, so you can get brown rice. Yes, that's the whole version. Mm -hmm. It is brown rice. Right. To be fair. Yeah, brown rice is bad. Um, so quinoa, of course. I have this funny story about rice. Okay. okay. This is going to gross everyone out. Oh, good. So um, I don't even remember where I was. Medical school, maybe? Or residency, one of those. And we're all talking about food, right? And I think we were going to have rice for lunch or dinner or something. I don't know. 
There's a class. <laughs> and somebody goes, you shouldn't eat that rice. You know, you should always wash your rice before you um, cook it. And I'm like, really, why? Mm. <laughs> and I have no idea if this is true, but it changed my whole viewpoint of rice from that point on. Oh, well. Well, because people that are working in the rice, oh. <laughs> they, they don't have a bathroom out there. And so they just go out there in the rice paddies. And I was like, oh, I should wash my rice. Oh my that's gosh. pretty gross. Well, how are you washing it? <laughs> Just rinse it. I mean, you think that's doing anything? If there's really like... <laughs> but it's psychological. Okay. <laughs> and you can think that you're washing the pee off your rice. You know, it's about to go into <laughs> boiling water, right? That's just going to kill the bugs. Wow. <laughs> it's not going to remove the pee water. Neither is water. <laughs> That is absurd. Okay. This is what you talk about at like two in the morning when oh, you're a resident. <laughs> Rice patty tea water. Yeah. Oh, and the mints. Yeah. You know, like have you ever um, heard the mint? Oh, no, that one's legit. <laughs> like that's been scientifically proven. They don't wash their do hands take, and then they get the mints when do you not leave. Take don't, the mints. They have to be wrapped. Don't take the mints out of the mint bowl. All right. <laughs> They're gluten free, though. Let's get back to gluten free grains. <laughs> All right, right. So a lot of ancient grains, so like um, amaranth. I don't even know what that is. I mean, it, you know, if you go to like the bulk section like of the flower. store, yeah, you can get all these different, I mean. So it have like a flowery taste? Well, I mean, it's not flower, it's a, it's a green. You I know, know but like, it sounds like it could be a flower. Oh, like, oh, I see. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. It's a lot of them are kind of, kind of nutty. Yeah. Oh, I like nutty. Um, millet and then like buckwheat mm -hmm. actually oh, yeah. is another one. Sorghum is um, they the make um, and teff. What do they make out of sorghum? Molasses, right? Maybe so. I'm not sure. Anyway, mm -hmm. and then corn. Corn, corn syrup. Yeah. Corn. And then teff. Um, yeah, teff. teff. It's just another one of those ancient is. greens. I mean, they're just little. It's ancient. That's why we haven't heard of it. Oops. Yes. And then oats. I mean, you have to be careful about how they're processed because some of them will say that, you know, they're processed in the same place with wheat or oh. something. So it's not that oats aren't gluten-free, it's just that some oats may not be. So you kind of have to be. My daughter's really funny. Yeah. Yesterday we were going through the store and she goes, Mom, I hate it when you get a container of peanuts and then it says it's processed in a building with nuts. <laughs> what do you think? It's in the container. <laughs> So Nuts. solid point right there. <laughs> she solid. goes, they do that with other stuff too. <laughs> like, you're so right. Just dairy. You get sour cream and guess what? It's <laughs> processed in a facility with dairy. <laughs> As if I didn't know that. Thanks. <laughs> they are covering their butts like to their own detriment. It cracks me up. So. She cracks me up. So those are the places where you can get whole grains and get all your nutrients that you need. And they're not gluten. And they are gluten free. Okay. Yeah. But also all those other foods we talked about. And then like just out of convenience when you need gluten. to, you go to the gluten free section and get your little packaged yeah. items. But do not base your diet on them. Yeah. Well, if you're going to make brownies that night, because that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And you're celiac, you should get the gluten free brownies. Yes. For certain. Otherwise, go with the scratch. Make them from scratch, people. It's not that hard. I have this really lovely recipe for brownies, mm -hmm. and it's from like Gourmet Magazine from I don't know six years ago. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's like a you can't eat just one. Yeah, from scratch. It doesn't actually take that much longer. I mean, it's like buying pancake mix. I mean. It's it's, they got like four ingredients now. You can handle it. Yeah. You can make them from scratch. It's not yeah. that much different. Yeah. Yeah. Pancakes, I make this big whole container. It's like this big mm -hmm. of mix. Oh. And it lasts me like at least four or five pancake mix. Okay. And I just like get it, you know, scoop out yeah, how much I need out, throw some each time. Mm -hmm. Eggs and milk. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. Some and some vanilla. What about it? I love that stuff. My mom is like, she loves to make cakes and stuff. And um, so she adds uh, almond extract. 
or vanilla. And like, if you watch her, she's like, mm -hmm. I need a little bit of almond extract or vanilla or whichever one she's doing. And so you get it for it. And then um, she just dumps it in. <laughs> like, that's a lot, mom. Oh, you can't have too much, she says. Okay. It does taste good. Yeah, then. I guess yeah. she's right. It's not gluten free, though. Sorry, guys. There you go. Got to watch. Got to read your labels. You do. And you need to, like I said, you need to consult a, a professional. Yeah, this for one a is lot something of these things. that, like, until you have really good experience with mm -hmm. it, you need help. Yeah. What should we do next? Are we so, done? Did we beat gluten to death? Yes, I think we did. And make it gluey? But I stringy? think we should, um, you know, finish the topic with the um, leaky gut next week because that's kind of how this kind of ties together. Leaky gut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Leaky gut it is. Yeah. Um, and then, you know what, after that, we should probably, have we actually ever talked about IBS? It's on our list. We should yeah, just go into I know, that. that we'll do that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, actually, that would be good to do because leaky or IBS does, um, you can have IBS with constipation or IBS with diarrhea. And so then we should add diarrhea to our list and we should do constipation, diarrhea, fiber. That would be a great. Just kind we're going to be together. all about the gut. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're going to beat this gut to death. So cool. next week, it'll be leaky gut. Please join us for all of the loveliness and fun of Leaky Gut. Yes. And um, have fun tonight trick-or-treating all you lovely children and big children out there. And mm -hmm. don't eat all of your candy all at once. And um, watch out for the gluten-filled candy because there is some. Yes, read your labels. Yeah, read your labels. All right. Have a lovely rest of your day. Heather has to scoot off to do some yes, fun do. times with her child at school and parties. And we will see you guys later. And always ask questions if you have some. Bye-bye.